Hello and welcome to my Maths Core 1 revision video. Just a reminder, this is not to teach you how to do Core 1, just to teach you how to do well in the exam for it. It's two separate things. This is for Chapter 1. There are 13 chapters in the book, I plan to make a video for them all. And I'm hopefully going to sum up all the points that you need to know for your exam in a quick way. And Chapter 1 is Coordinates, Points and Lines which unfortunately isn't a very exciting chapter. It basically means you need to memorize formulas and there's no nice fun way around this. It is simply memorize them so you can use them in the exam. And I'm gonna quickly run through why each one of these works, but you don't really need to know to be honest, you just need to know how to use them and how to remember them, so that's what I'm gonna focus on. So the first one, the distance between points, is the square root of x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. Now let's look into why this actually is. If we have ourselves a line, let's make a line here, with two random points, they could be any points, it doesn't matter, we can make this line into a right angle triangle by coming along here and by coming down here making ourselves a right angle triangle and then simple Pythagoras will tell us if we label these sides A, B and C we can write C squared equals A squared plus B squared and therefore C aka the distance between these two points the square root of a squared plus b squared which is what our formula is saying but instead of using a and b it's using x2 minus x1 which is also known as the difference in the two x values and y2 minus y1 which is the difference in the two y values so that's why it works but to be honest you don't really need to know that all you need to know is how to use it so let's say that we had two points here, we'll call this one 7, 8, we'll call this one minus 2, 4. You want to know the distance between these two points? You start off with your x coordinates. I usually put the biggest one as x2, but it doesn't make a difference which way around you do it. It will just, I find it easier. So I will do the first x value 7 take away the second one minus 2 7 minus minus 2 is 9 so we've got 9 squared there plus the first y value which is 8 take away the second one 8 take away 4 is 4 4 squared that would get us 81 plus 16 which comes out as the horrific number of 97. So our answer of the distance between these two points is root 97. Of course in the exam they give you numbers that actually work and come to a nice answer. But it's honestly as simple as that. The only hard thing is remembering the formula. So you literally just have to sit and revise that. Next up, gradient of a line. This one again, if we have our random line. Everybody should know from GCSE that to work out the gradient you can make a triangle just like this and you do the y value difference divided by the x value difference and this is just a nice formula way of writing that rather than having to draw out a diagram and do all the little bits of maths. So if we take our points, what was it, 7 and 8 minus 2 and 4 I think we can simply do this formula, y2 minus y1, 8 minus 4 is 4, over x2 minus x1, 7 minus minus 2 is 9. So that's the gradient of this line, it's as simple as that. Again, the only difficult thing is remembering the formula. Then once you know that, all you have to do is sub in your values. Dead simple, you just have to revise that formula. The equation of a line is the fundamental of this topic. And it basically says if you know one point, x1 and y1, and the gradient, m, 
you can work out the equation of that line. And it makes sense, if you have a point and a set gradient going through it, there's only one thing that that can be, there's no variation. There's two points, you could have curves through it or anything, one point but different gradients, then you know it could be coming in from this angle, it could be anything. But once you have one gradient and one point, there's only one value it can be. And it's just a case of expanding out the brackets once you know that. So let's take our point as minus 2, 4 again. And let's say that we have a gradient of 3 over 4. We can sub these values in. We would get y minus y1, which is 4, equals the gradient into x minus x1, which is minus 2. Minus minus 2 is plus 2. Then to, sim to get rid of this fraction, we times this side by 4. So we get... 4y minus 16 equals, times in this by 4 just cancels this bit. Then we can times this 3 into the brackets, get 3x plus 6. And then it will usually ask you to leave it in the form 3x minus 4y, uh, what am I doing here, plus 22, I think. <laughs> Maths on the spot is never a good thing. And it will usually ask you to leave it in this form. It will tell you in the question if it wants you to do that. But again, if you remember the formula, it's just a case of subbing in your values and expanding the algebra, which if you're careful about it, shouldn't be a problem. And the final thing you need to know, not so much a formula as a general rule, that if you have a line and another line perpendicular to it, that means they're at right angles to each other. So let's put a right angle on there. The gradient of, let's call it line A, will be the negative reciprocal of line B. Now that sounds scary, but all it means is, let's say A is 3 over 4. To get the gradient of B, first of all you do the reciprocal, which means you swap the numbers around so it becomes 4 over 3. If it was just 3 on its own it would become 1 over 3. That's the only way that it might confuse you. It's literally just swapping the numbers around. And then to make it the negative reciprocal just change the sign. So if that was already a negative I would have changed it to a positive. And it's literally as simple as that that may come up in a question that you will work out the gradient of one line and then need to use this rule to get the gradient of a perpendicular line so that you can put it into this equation and that's actually quite likely to be a question what a good question would be is they would give you two points and they would ask you to work out the equation of this perpendicular line here so you would have to Sorry, let's get my diagram up. There we go. You would have to work out the gradient of these two points using your formula, work out the gradient of this line using that rule, and then sub it all in to your equation of a straight line to get the final answer. And that's been a quick overview of the formulas, but to be honest, you don't need to know why any of them work. You just need to remember them for the exam and be confident in putting in numbers and as long as you have the right numbers and you know the formula for certain that shouldn't be an issue so I would suggest that you take a screenshot of this page now or you write them down and you just sit and remember them there's no nice way to do it but that is everything you need to know for chapter one I hope this has been remotely useful to someone I will be making more of these videos for all the chapters because I'm revising for my core one exam and I find that making videos and teaching it is a good way to revise. So, hope this has helped someone. See you guys in chapter two.